video, we will be looking at various biases found in different intelligence tests. China. The earliest recorded example of intelligence testing comes from the Han Dynasty, which spanned 426 years, starting in the year 206 BC. The test was called the Imperial Civil Service Exam. It was used to test competency and potential performance of government officials. The exam was improved upon and used throughout the various dynasties for the next two millennia. The exam was abolished in China, China in the late 19th century, just as modern intelligence testing, as we know it, was beginning to take form. The twisted story of modern intelligence testing and its inherent bias begins with Sir Francis Galton. Inspired by his cousin, Charles Darwin, he published a book called Hereditary Genius in 1869. It examined the link between genetics and intelligence, founding the field of eugenics. While eugenics and Mr. Galton himself are highly controversial topics, and many atrocities can be acquitted to his beliefs, they are not relevant to this video, nor could I do them the justice they deserve. Anyway, the concept of eugenics took America by storm at a crucial time in our history. Immigrants from all over the world were pouring into the United States through places like Ellis Island and Angel Island. According to the theory of eugenics at the time, America had to find a way to keep the feeble-minded out in order to stop it from continuing for generations to come. In order to do so, we had to develop a test to determine who was fit for admittance. In a quote from the Scientific American from January 9, 1915, the purpose of our mental measuring scale at Ellis Island is the sorting out of those immigrants who may, because of their mental makeup, become a burden to the state or who may produce offspring that will require care in prisons, asylums, or other institutions. This first significant intelligence test offers us some examples of cultural and language bias. Take a moment to look at this image. This is an example of what they would ask incoming immigrants at Ellis Island. Imagine it's 1903, and you're a peasant from northern Italy or a farmer from Czechoslovakia, and you're asked to fill in what is missing in these images. Aside from the language barrier and asking the immigrants to answer, some of these images would be completely foreign. In fact, most of them. A farmer would not be playing tennis and would have no notion of the sport or that the net is missing. A peasant from northern Italy would probably not have access to electricity and therefore have no concept of the filament in a light bulb, nor would they be applying makeup like the woman in the bottom image. At around the same time that Ellis Island was using the test we just saw, a Frenchman named Alfred Binet was commissioned by the French government to develop a new test for their newly established public school system. Alfred believed that intelligence is something that can grow and expand over time and is something that is influenced by someone's environment, contrary to eugenics. His test was adopted all over, especially in America. It was adapted and enhanced over time, but it is essentially the same concept that we use today. Now that we've reached this point in history, we can look at examples of testing bias that are still relevant to intelligence testing today. Let's take a look at some examples from the WISC test. Keep in mind that these questions are engineered for children around kindergarten age. Now, in this question, you would have to know what a jack-o'-lantern is, or at least what the other objects are and use the process of elimination. This seems simple enough. However, carving pumpkins and even the holiday Halloween itself are mainly American traditions. Say a family moved to California from Thailand, and they had a six-year-old child. The kid takes the whisk test in public school but has no idea what a jack-o'-lantern is because they never celebrated Halloween back in Thailand. Is this child less intelligent for not being exposed to a specific holiday? What about this question? If there were no bats where you lived, how would you know that they are nocturnal? A sample question from the Waze 3 test, engineered for adults, reads, 
What does this saying mean? A stitch in time saves nine. As any idiom, you would really only understand them if you are fluent in a language. And even then, you may not have heard the saying before. In all honesty, I can't even recall a time I've ever heard someone say that in natural speak. These cultural and linguistic biases are prevalent in many intelligence tests. For example, in the SAT, there are questions asking about regatta, a form of boat racing only those of higher socioeconomic stature would be exposed to. With all of these examples of cultural bias, it is important to note that different definitions of intelligence exist across cultures. The author of the book, The Geography of Thought, Richard Nisbet, noted that people in Western countries tend to view intelligence as a means for individuals to devise categories and engage in rational debate, while people in Eastern cultures see it as a way for members of community to recognize contradiction and complexity and to play their social roles successfully. Other researchers have come to similar conclusions. Psychologists Robert Sternberg and Dr. Shi Ying Yang have found in their own studies that Taiwanese Slash China conceptions of intelligence emphasize understanding and relating to others, including knowing when and when not to show one's intelligence. With this research in mind, the American Psychological Association states that researchers are working to design new intelligence tests that are sensitive to the values of other cultures in which they are used and also able to compare intelligence across cultures.